How are you doing? It's Bill DeWeese, Pro VoiceOver Talent and VoiceOver Career Coach. Today's video is being brought to you by Jeff Bianchi, Seaport Web Designs. He is the only person I will let create or touch or service my website. When it comes to, to VoiceOver websites, you want to make sure your website is done really well, but just as importantly, that it's taken good care of, kept up to date, and the person who will work with you and is responsive to you. And that's why I want to encourage you to go to VOWebsites.com. VOWebsites.com. When you go there, you'll immediately be given the Dewey's discount, which is half price. You'll be able to set up your website for just 49 bucks by the best. Uh, like I said, Jeff is the only guy I trust, and you can trust him as well. So check it out. Get set up today. VOWebsites.com. All right, today I want to talk about something that just doesn't make sense for voiceover. And if I had a dollar for every time that I was asked this question, and here's the question, how do I determine what my voiceover niche or niche should be? About a dollar for every time I heard that, I'd have, I'd have a lot of dollars. It gets asked a lot. And it's not a stupid question. I understand why it's asked, but from a business perspective, trying to determine that, especially early on in your career, does not make sense. Don't do it. There are voices out there that will say, well, that's one of the first things you should do. And I'm here to tell you, it's one of the uh, worst things you could possibly do up front because it will keep you from determining what your voice is and what your niche or your niche should be. Here's the thing. Uh, and let me explain this uh, using an analogy that, that helps me to better understand it and hopefully it will help you as well. Uh, I come from a broadcast background. I've mentioned that before, specifically radio. And uh, I was a program director for a, a few decades and, um, you know, uh, had to choose a lot of music. Um, that was part of my job, either for me or working with a music director to pick the music for radio stations. And something I enjoyed and I loved and I, I was very good at that. However, as good as your ear is for picking hit songs, the reality is the market, the market, your listeners, those people out there who, who, who tune into your radio station, they're the ones who, they'll let you know whether it's a hit or not. And there have been songs that I thought would have been, that were fantastic, that they should be major hits, that were dogs. You know, I mean, they, they went nowhere. Other songs that I thought, no, that end up becoming huge hits. The point is that it's really, we are not the best ones to decide that. And even as a, as a coach, I can give you my opinion, but ultimately my opinion doesn't matter. You, the coach you work with, their opinion doesn't matter. What matters is the feedback that you get from the marketplace. And that happens over a period of time. So my, my philosophy, my approach that has worked not only exceptionally well for me, but for the many, 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 many students I've worked with is to market broadly. Even though there may be an area that you want to get into, for instance, you may be thinking, okay, I want to be a, a character actor. I want to do video games. I want to do commercials. I want to do corporate work. I want to do audiobooks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, wanting to or having a desire to do those things. And I'm not saying that you can't do those or that those things will, will, will not be something you'll be able to attain during your career. You may very well. Uh, however, to determine what you are best at, and to perhaps just as importantly, be able to make an income while you're determining that market broadly. Don't, don't corner yourself into thinking, well, I want to do medical narration and that's all I will do. So how do I market to find just people who do medical, you know, hire uh, voiceovers for medical narration? Market broadly to media production companies because they do a lot of different stuff. And what will happen over time is that you will get feedback. Over time, you will begin to, to see a pattern in what people say when they hire you and when they listen to your demos and when they listen to your auditions. And over time, you'll begin to get a strong sense of what your voice is and what your niche or your niche should be. Uh, to give you a, for instance, over many years, I mean, I've done voiceover full-time for 14, 14 years. And um, what I never expected to happen, but has happened because this is what the market has given me the feedback and says to me is that I apparently am pretty good at doing hospital and healthcare related work, specifically commercials. 
I mean, I do, I do commercials for Mayo Clinic and Henry Ford Health System, Olathe uh, Health System, University of Cleveland, uh, University of St. Louis. Uh, there's two or three or four more others in there. I just, I do a lot of TV and radio commercials for hospital systems. And I also do a boatload of healthcare-related uh, narration, especially I do a lot of pharmaceutical, a lot, a lot of that. And um, I've been told that by people who hire me, they say they find my voice comforting and um, that uh, it's reassuring. And again, that's not what I was going for when I got into voiceover, but apparently my, my, my personality, my approach, my attitude, lends itself toward that. Now, that doesn't mean I do that exclusively. It doesn't even mean I don't even market myself that way. I allow the people who hire me or who hear my demos, who hear my auditions to make that determination. But you'll also find me on casino commercials, on car commercials, uh, doing John Deere stuff and, you know, everything for, you know, farmers and, and corporate. And I mean, you name it, I do it. But when it comes to the healthcare industry, you know, I, the, the market tells me that they like me more for that than anything else. Uh, and sure, there are other things that maybe I would, uh, that I would rather do or that in my mind I thought I would like to do when I first get started. But you know what? That's what the market tells me. And so that's the path I'm going to follow. Now, so all I'm saying is if you get caught up in this, okay, I've got to figure out what I'm best at early on you are really doing yourself a big disservice. And if somebody tells you to do that, you should turn and run and go the other direction. That is just, that is bad advice. That is really bad advice. Market yourself broadly and listen. Listen to the feedback you get to begin to help to shape the direction of your career. I hope you found this helpful. Hey, by the way, uh, I've got a big summer sale going on. It's my summer series. It's a, a summer voiceover training series. It starts this Wednesday night for the next three consecutive Wednesdays. Uh, we'll be doing uh, classes on how to get set up and to make money on Fiverr. That's going to be taught by my daughter, who makes about 7000 bucks a month recording voiceovers just on Fiverr. Then we've got Mike Hathcote teaching how to use social media, all the various uh, social media platforms, and Keith Harris talking about how to build repeat business, which is, I firmly believe, the best way to build a business. is to, The fastest, cheapest, easiest way to do it is to get current clients to come back to you over and over again. More information and links to purchase those classes below, and I hope you'll take part of that. Thanks for checking out the video. I hope you'll like, share, subscribe, and we will talk very soon.